Hello and welcome to episode 30 of Dial Extra Hero Clicks. Today it's just me, your host Hunter Smith. The boys are not here and that's because it's been one of the longest days of my life and their lives too included since they took place, they took part in a lot of it. Um, tonight's episode is just going to be a, a much shorter one than you're used to. We're going to cover the main areas and uh, just have to save a lot of the other content for next week's episode because... Uh, whenever we were getting off the interstate to our get to our clicks venue today, uh, I blew a tire, truck tire, and we have spent the last four hours pretty much trying to find some place that's still open that could fix the tire. And by the time we got to places, they were already closed. And anyways, just a long story short, it's been a mess. I still have not gotten my truck fixed. It still is sitting in a parking lot in a very bad neighborhood downtown. And hopefully it doesn't get either stolen, although I don't know how they're going to get it anywhere with a completely flat tire, or vandalized or towed overnight. But hopefully it's still there tomorrow and I can get it fixed. But this has been just an awful, awful long night. So by it's very late where we're from, so the boys went ahead and went home they're tired i'm tired and uh it's just gonna be me i'm just gonna cover you know like i said the basics um i will talk about some spoilers that came out this week um first we have gates from superman legion of superheroes if you guys want to follow along with me you can go to heroclicks.com and uh, click on gates there there's not a whole lot to say about this guy uh he's 60 points he he does have the Legion Lost and the Legion Superheroes keywords. He has a special movement power that can be pretty useful. He has phasing, and he can carry up to four friendlies regardless of speed symbols. That's pretty nice. If all carried characters share a keyword with him, and he doesn't modify his speed value from the carry ability either, and he has 14 movement. So that's a very, very nice taxi. Uh, Again, it's only going to be four Legion teams, but I have to say, for Legion teams, for only 60 points, because if you think about it, all Legion teams, almost every Legion member flies, so that's really, they had to give him this power. If he if his purpose is to be a taxi for the Legion, then he has to be able to carry flyers. But carrying four, four flyers and uh, carrying them up to 14 squares with phasing is very, very nice. And then uh, his de special defense power is uh, super senses on a four to six. He has no range. He has no attack powers ever. He has very low attack and damage uh, all the way down his dial. And he, he does pick up some perplex later, but he, he's pretty focused. He's just a phasing teleport guy. It might be useful to use on your Legion teams. Other than that, he's nothing super special to, to speak of. Yeah. Uh, we also got the... Uh, Days of Future Past, Sprite, and Ariel. Now, these, I really, I'll be quite honest, I don't like them. I think they're crap. Um, these are both Kitty Pride, and they basically Battlefield promote into each other, which I think is a pretty stupid idea. I don't know why you don't do the morph mechanic. Um, and also, another reason why you should, shouldn't have to promote them into each other. For one, why promote into a figure... It's like, oh, I'm going to promote into the other version of myself and then have to hit the promotion roll again to switch back and forth. It's like, isn't that what Morph is for? Like, you know, what is the point of promoting? In my mind, promotion is going from a small points, little, you know, figure into a bigger, more powerful figure, maybe on the same click or a lesser click either way, kind of like Alter Ego. This doesn't really feel like a promotion to me. It just literally just feels like a morph. It literally just feels like going from one form to the other. To the other. In fact, they cost the exact same amount of points. And it's also going to be really hard to promote them because they have really shitty values um, on as, at, attack wise. And they also have no move in attack. Um, Sprite is has a lot of sidestep and a few a little bit of um, exploit weakness. She does have traded super senses, which is nice though. But for 55 points, her dial is very overwhelming, underwhelming. Sorry. And then Ariel also 
nothing that special. She does have some support, and she has a little bit of uh, precision strike. N- neither one of them are anything to really get excited about in my mind. Um, we got some... Now, th- this this will not be on HeroClicks.com, but we got some images of some of the sculpts for the Green Lantern sets. There is going to be a Simon Baz. There's going to be a couple different Johns and guys in house, so that's really cool to see. Um, uh, there's an, a, a Kyle shown as well, so you get in the full Green Lantern core. Hopefully, some of the other core will be shown, like uh, Chip and some of the other ones, the Doug that a, a lot of people want that they haven't really you know had before. Uh, one spoiler that is on HeroClicks.com that you can follow along with me is Berserk Gorilla, 70 points, no special powers, no traits. Uh, he does have improved movement, ignores pretty much everything. And this is just, this guy's your standard sealed beater. I mean, I can't put it any more simpler than that. 70 points in Dom, 6 clicks of either charge or flurry. Has some super strength top dial, some CCE late dial. He's just, literally just a 70 point sev- secondary attacker. That's what he does. No surprises here. Um, he doesn't, it, it's not a bad dial for 70 points though. I mean, if I pull him in sealed and I need that secondary attacker, he's a pretty dang good option. And he's also another um, option for your animal team, so that's always good. Don't forget the Yu-Gi-Oh! set should be out this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, which would be February 5th. And I believe the Superman Legion of Superheroes Gravity Feed will also come out that day. Speaking of the super, uh, the slosh, as we'll call it, Gravity Feed, um, the dials are spoiled on HC Realms. And if you guys are HC Realms members, I will copy this... Uh, thread and I will post it on this episode so you guys can can find what I'm talking about. But the dials have been spoiled and have been coded already. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I do want to mention just a kind of a couple of the ones that are worth mentioning that are good. Um, Cosmic Boy is really good. He is only 70 points and top dial. He has uh, willpower and TK, and uh, he has a special movement power of. When he's in hindering, he can get him and adjacent friendlies can can use toughness. Andy has perplex and leadership, and when he hits leadership on a six, he can remove a token from any adjacent friendly character with the Legion of Superheroes keyword. But what really helps with that, especially with that leadership, is his trait, and this will be a trait that'll be on a lot of these, or not a lot, but a few of these other gravity feed pieces. And this is really interesting. When you, it's called Welcome to the Legion. When you build your force. Choose one character 50 points or less. That character gains the Legion of Superheroes keyword and the flight symbol this game. If your force includes other characters with this trait, you can increase the point value of the chosen character by 50 points if this character doesn't use the trait. So what that means is if you run uh, Saturn Girl is is another pretty good piece out of this gravity feed that I'll talk about. If you play both Cosmic Boy and Saturn Girl on your team then you can do it for one character but choose a 100 point character instead of a 50 instead of 250 point characters um i really like that that's really cool and it may play into the meta because a, a few of these pieces are pretty good and being able to if, if there are you know we haven't seen the full set yet but if there are some really legit legion pieces that trade is going to come in pretty damn handy because it's when you build, so it will help you hit theme team bonuses. So being able to give 50-point figures that you're throwing on your team that are kind of standard meta staples, like uh, Enchantress at 50 points, or even if you want to go down to like a John Constantine or a, a Chaos War Scarlet Witch at 50, um, or a Jinx or something like that, like helping them fit in to hit the theme team on your Legion team, that's pretty nice. Um, this Cosmic Boy's dial is really good. He has the TK and the willpower and a special perp and leadership. And then the rest of his dial is uh, running shot pulse wave. But for, And he's a wild card. So for 70 points, I really like his dial quite a bit. I also like Saturn Girl who has, um, she's 102. And she's mind control, end cap, and prob control. She's, she has the welcome to the legion trait. And she gets a special defense power. Uh, which is when it's revealed and at the beginning of your turn, choose reflexes or energy shield. She can use it till your next turn. And she has psychic blast for her last four clicks. So 
keep her at ranged, hit with either mind control or in cap. She's a, a lot more costly than um, Cosmic Boy. And I've I kind of noticed on a lot of these spoilers that we've seen recently since the updated PAC, I can tell, maybe it's just me, but I can tell that they're pricing mind control more than what they used to make it cost. And what I mean by when I say make it cost is how much the point cost of the figure ends up you know, being calculated up to. Seems to me they're weighing mind control as more points as as being worth more points than they used to. And that makes sense because mind control is much better now with the changes to it. So that's pretty cool to see. Uh, Lightning Lad is pretty good. Uh, he also has the Welcome to the Legion trait. And he also has another trait when he's adjacent to a friendly Lightning Last or Lightning Lord. So that right there tells you that those two will most likely be in the main set of Legion of Superheroes. Uh, modify his attack and damage by, and damage by plus one. And he has a running shot energy explosion with two bolts. He has energy shield full dial. He has RCE or perplex on every click. So he's just a pretty dang good 116 points. Pretty dang solid for his points. Uh, the there is a kind of a generic police officer uh, for you guys who are big police fans. This guy's not too bad. Uh, he has he's forty five points, has police team ability. He has a uh, running shot and energy shield and enhancement. Enhancement is very good for so it, it, having enhancement and the police team ability and running shot is uh, some pretty good things to put on your police force. And then later in his dial, he gets uh, outwit, but can't use it to outwit to counter uh, defense powers. But that's also a power that um, the police teams typically lack. So not a bad option, at, at least something to throw in your police toolbox if you're a big police player. Uh, Triplicate Girl is really cool. Um, not exactly. Let's talk about how she works, though. She's 87 points, and she has a long dial. Um, not super damaging, kind of a, almost feels like a kitty pride, like there's some sidestep here, there's a lot of um, super senses, and there's some flurry here and there, but what's really cool about her is her trait. When you set up your force, place two triplicate girl bystander tokens, as described on this card, and uh, on the map adjacent to her, so whenever you, before the game even starts, when you put triplicate girl in your starting area, you pop out two little triplicate girl, basically bystander tokens. The the bystander tokens can replace their values with triplicate girl's printed combat values, and they can use any powers that triplicate girl can currently use. That's really badass. Uh, when one of them is KO'd, triplicate girl can use willpower for the rest of the game, and when she would be KO'd, you have to you can KO a friendly triplicate girl instead. Um, if there is one healer to click seven, this ability can't be ignored. And then triplicate girl also has a uh, damage ability that's in power, but only on other triplicate girls. So that's really cool. Whether this turns out to be a really viable piece or not, uh, I will say it's not too bad for its points, only 87 points. Whether it turns out to be a super viable piece or not, I don't know. But I will note that the duplicates are flyers. So that's already giving your team two more flyers to carry people around for free. I just think that's really cool, going to be a really fun uh, piece to play. Even though I'm not a big Legion Superheroes fan, I will definitely be playing this piece and trying out its mechanics because I really dig them. And then the last piece that I thought was pretty dang good uh, in the Gravity Feed is Shrinking Violet. She's 75 points and has a lot of charge, precision strike, and willpower, and uh, CCE, but very low damage output, but she does have precision strike a lot. She has a morph though, and you um, yeah, typical morph. You give her, you know, the action. You change to another one. So that tells us that there's most likely, for sure, going to be another one in the main set, as is typically the case with gravity feeds. Uh, but she also has another trait. During the beginning of your turn, you can choose that she has tiny symbol until your next turn. If you do, she gets negative three speed. So if you're at range and you're thinking you're going to get shot at, or you want to be carried, you can choose tiny size and get the benefits of the tiny size. Um, or if your other guys need to see over you to shoot, um, that's another option too. So really like chain pieces that can change their size. Uh, the Chase Primes Titan, um, what is his name? I feel like an idiot because I'm going to 
really big Teen Titans fan. I can't think of his name right now, but um, he has that ability where he can go from giant to tiny or whatever, and I really, really dig that. It's really useful. So she's the only other really one that's definitely worth mentioning. Uh, we got some sculpts for Deadpool. We got a Kane sculpt revealed. We got some more Heroes for Hire figures um, spoiled, including a Misty and Colleen uh, single. So there'll be some split options for your Misty and Colleen wing duo that you got in Spider-Man. So that was really cool to see, too. Um, Fast Forces for Superman Legion of Superheroes is going to be the Legion of Doom. Those dials have been spoiled, and I'll be talking about them on the day that that Fast Forces releases. I'll be doing a video review for that, so you guys can check that out on our YouTube channel. I'll go into depth on each dial and break it down, tell you what's good, uh, if the whole thing is worth buying or not, spending your money on, and I'll go through and review each figure individually on the video. Um, let's see. What we played. Wednesday we had kind of a fun day. So nothing much to say about that. Today we did DC comic book covers. I did a Red Hood and the Outlaws cover. Because it had a lot of pieces on it that I've been wanting to try. And um, I did kind of half uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws crew. And half the League of Assassins crew. So I had uh, Shiva from Teen Titans. Bronze Tiger who's a beast. I, I've used him back in the... You know I used to use him all the time. Busted him out again today. He's really good for his points. Um, and uh, she, uh, let's see, or sorry, not Shiva from Teen Titans, Cheshire from Teen Titans, and then Shiva from Arkham Origins, which just came out. And then on the other side, on the good guys, I had Red Hood from SOG and Starfire from SOG, who has the penetrating energy explosion. That was very useful, of course. And for the Red. Um, for the Arsenal option, I didn't really like the Teen Titans or the uh, the newer version that we have. So I went, or the SOG or the Teen Titans options all that much. The Teen Titan ones isn't bad, but he's a little too expensive. So I went back and went with the old faithful uh, Red Arrow from Crisis, I think. He's 72 points. The dude's really good for his points. Very point efficient. He has energy explosion and he can smoke cloud when he does. Or he can RCE. The good thing about that smoke cloud is even if you miss, you still get to go ahead and throw out the smoke cloud. So I was using that quite a bit. That came in really handy, and I was just using... The, the idea with the team was to take maximum advantage of the Outsider's team ability, and that definitely was... Um, I, I definitely executed that. I played on uh, hindering heavy maps, range heavy maps, since a lot of my team is ranged. Uh, mainly the bridge from Spider-Man, and um, just used used the hindering bonuses to my benefit while outsider sidersing my opponents to prevent them from getting the bonuses. Um, outsiders, man, I don't know. That honestly may be the best team ability in the game. I know Mystics is good. I know Power Cosmic's good, but man, the uses for outsiders are just endless. I mean. Whether it's carrying your own figures and doing it to yourself so you don't take the negative two, or whether it's shutting down energy explosion, reflexes, super strength, um, CCE, RCE, um, it, tons of stuff. It was it was so perplex. It was so useful, and it really was the game changer in most of my games. Was just using it offensively and defensively, and using it creatively to just really take full advantage of it. Um, Cheshire was the only piece that I felt was pretty weak on the team for her points and even then I was able to use her pretty well she has traded poison or you can give her a power action to do one penetrating to an adjacent figure and she's a wild card um, what I was doing with her was I didn't have a whole lot of ways through dampers on the team so I would kind of send her either send her off of a over to a group of people who she could poison easily or send her after big bricks who had some impervious and stuff and let her go ahead and do the penetrating poison. Um, and she wasn't as bad for her points as I thought. Overall, I went 3-0, and had some extremely close games. My second and third games were really close. Um, I managed to hit some rolls I needed, and uh, my opponent missed one roll at the end that might have saved him, although I also missed the same roll that was going to give me just me points. So I guess it was 
I guess I probably still would have won, but that was a really close match. Second round was a really close match, too. Really fun. And uh, went 3-0. and The team was really good. Shiva from Arkham Origins is so good. We talked about her when we did Arkham Origins. I said I think she's the best figure in the set of Arkham Origins, and I definitely stand by that. She was so sick and just so worth her points uh, in this match. And, um... Yeah, that is it. Um... I'm not going to talk about the main topic today. Like I said, I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty quick because I still have to go to work after this. Uh, community section. We have A, we have a special funny video coming up soon on the YouTube channel. So keep your eyes out for that. Uh, you guys, if you're longtime listeners, you know of my bet that I had where I have to eat olives um, because Anderson Silva lost his fight by horribly breaking his legs in a freak accident. But my cousin Aaron really doesn't give a crap um, <laughs> that it was a freak accident. Phil, a uh, friend of the show, had the same bet with me, but he reneged it after seeing the freak accident, and we're going to do that again at another time. But I will have to man up and pay up on my bet on a video on our YouTube channel, so that will be up there pretty soon. Um, dial Design... We have a winner for January. It was Teddy Truman, who I actually think is a new... I don't think he had participated except for this month. Um, made some really good dials. And he made a really cool plastic man this week, which we will talk about next week. That'll be our featured dial section next week. And uh, so congratulations to him. I'll be contacting him to see what he wants for his prize. Uh, best build I need to talk about today because... It will be due by February 6th, and some of you guys may have seen me post on our YouTube and our, or sorry, our Facebook and our Twitter and saying that this is up. It is, in fact, um, running right now, and it will continue to be ran until February 6th. You guys can submit teams. Here are the build rules. And if you guys are not familiar with Best Build, let me sum it up real quick. Um, I give you build rules for an event that's coming up at one of our local venues. You submit a build a team that fits the rules and send it to us and then Austin and Drew and I take a big you know I make a big list of all the teams and we each look at them and we kind of like draft them and we we each pick which one we want to play and then we play them when the event comes up and whichever one of us does the best gets the best overall score the pl- one of you guys who submitted that team gets six custom uh, poker chips so it's kind of a I guess it's kind of a uh a random draw type thing, but you really can actually improve your chances um, of winning this by submitting good teams and submitting teams that you explain to us kind of, um, I, if I was playing this team, I would use this map and I would do this, you know, g- give us general strategies and ideas behind how the team works. And we're more likely to pick the teams where people have put in work, obviously, and, and that there's some good synergy there. So the build rules for February, this is kind of our Valentine's Day event. It is Silver Age, 400 points, so everything is legal except for feats and battlefield conditions. 400 points, and each figure on your team, on their starting click, has to have either a red power or a pink power showing on the dial. And white powers that specific that give you know, what powers are typically red, let's say you had a white power that gave you a special blades, which blades is typically a red power, but that does not count. It, a white power doesn't count. It has to be a red or a pink showing up on their top dial. So get those to me by February 6th. Uh, submit them to our Gmail at dial h 4 heroclicks at gmail.com. Uh, we had some emails on Gmail and Facebook. I will save those for next week so that the boys can chime in on those with me. So don't think I forgot about you guys who sent those in. We will definitely talk about them. A uh, question this week on Community Question was, which three comics do you look most forward to each month? Had a lot of people chime in. Um, some pretty varied answers. I don't know that there was necessarily a book that I saw that that people, you know, that really stuck out to me. I think most people had a really diverse answer, and that's really cool. Um, my three personal favorites right now, uh, Saga and Thor, God of Thunder for sure. My third one, I really couldn't make up my mind. Um, there's there's like three Batman books that I'm really loving right now. The main set, the main run uh, of Zero Year, I've really been enjoying Zero Year. And I really think it's awesome. I, it's a great idea for what they could do right now while the whole, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, forever evil type thing is going on. This is a great tangent to go on. This is very good storytelling. I'm really happy with it. I'm also really loving Batman Black and White, which is a... If you guys are big Batman fans, I'm sure you have read Batman Black and Whites before. This is just the kind of this year's or this era's uh, Black and White, and it's been really good so far. And I'm also really enjoying Batman Beyond uh, Unlimited and just Justice League Beyond, which is a it's a two-part book that comes out every month. It's been really good this month. There's a big arc going on in Justice League Beyond that's really coming to a head right now with Brainiac and everything. It's been really cool, too. So those I could not choose between those Batman books. But Saga Thor and, Bat- and the Batman crew were, were my three favorites. Um, two, two, two. Although I did hear that uh, uh, some big Invincible stuff came out this week, so I'm really looking forward to checking that out as well. Hopefully tomorrow. Um, comics we'll be talking about in Humanity next week. I'll wait till the boys are here and we'll talk about the first two issues and our first impressions on that series. And that's going to do it for me today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, send us questions or feedback at gmail. Dial H four hero clicks. That's the number four. Four hero clicks uh, at gmail.com. Submit your best build teams into that same email address and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And I will see you guys next week with the full Dial H hero clicks crew.